morning and welcome back to Catch the Vibe Outdoors. I'm your host, Justin Blanchard. Today is May 19th, 2015. Uh, as a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that by clicking that little subscribe button at the bottom of your viewer in YouTube. Uh, we will also be putting a clickable button directly onto the video to make it a bit easier. Uh, by following us, we will be giving away free prizes um, through our uh, through our little episodes here. Uh, and most of that is going to be through engaging onto our blog located at vibrationstackle.com. Uh, a few of the highlights from this week. Uh, this is a big one for us, for Vibrations Tackle. Uh, for the fourth year, we have made the issue of the In Fisherman magazine in an article called Bombing Walleye, written by Corey Schmidt. So, Corey, thank you very much uh, for including our product in this article. Very informative article about uh, numerous uh, lures that are now being utilized by walleye anglers, uh, both in, in tournament and um uh, you know, just your everyday walleye angler. But uh, as you can see, here's a few of the bombs that are listed. And actually, that's the second page, but you go to the front page. You know, it's talking jig wraps. There's so many cool baits in here that guys are using now. Um, you know, the trolling trend has is, is really been hot, but I, I kind of feel that... Uh, a lot of guys seem to be going more and more back towards pitching jigging. Um, that kind of seems to be the trend. I know the last couple walleye tournaments up in Green Bay were won that way. Um, you know, sometimes I wonder if the electronics that we now have these days uh, give us an upper edge to really be able to pinpoint those fish uh, on a graph. So, um, But uh, at any rate, check out the new In Fisherman. This is the June edition, uh, an article called Bombing Walleye. And actually, come to think of it, I read an article by uh, Doug Stang, and he uh, talks a little bit about just a couple pages in here. Um, he talks a little bit about why uh, he had Corey write the article and then gives a couple of his own little pointers on um, on bombing walleye and other species of fish, not just walleye. But uh, check it out in Fisherman, June, the June edition, 2015, bombing walleye. A uh, couple more highlights. Um, we are working on a new decal. Uh, it should be done by the end of this week. I hope to... Uh, share it with you next week a uh, couple let's see the sweepstakes just a reminder uh, this is our sweepstakes for 2015 you will be able to find these boxes along with some signs as you see back here uh, at a few of our our dealers uh, we will be creating a page that has the entire picture of what you're going to win if you uh, enter um, or have a chance to win if you enter but uh you can find our dealers located right now on our home page of our website by clicking on to find a dealer. I've started putting some of the pack some of the lures here that we're going to include in the prize package. And once again, don't re, uh, don't forget St. Croix is going to be also contributing a Saint, uh, an Avid X rod. Uh, moving on uh, quickly here. Um, we talked last week a little bit about the pelagic species of fish. Um, we talked about uh, that that's how you can win uh, this prize right now by uh, going into our blog and actually uh, uh, commenting on uh, different species of pelagic fish. This is what you can win. Episode 5, we're going to be drawing a name out of everybody who has uh, engaged into that blog. Um but where we're going with this, a friend of mine, uh, Lee Talkin, has uh, has brought a new crankbait for trolling to the market called the Pelagic Fish. Um, the, the 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 amount of uh, uh, work and detail that uh, he has put into these lures is absolutely incredible. And not not only is the lure um, very nice looking, one of the one of the finest. Uh, 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 paint jobs I've ever seen, but the lure has a tremendous amount of action. Um, I was able to uh, see it in a video that Lee had at a trade show in Milwaukee, and I mean, it covers so much area. Um, 
friend of mine, uh, uh, Israel Dunn, he's a kayak angler as well, and he likes it because that lure is covering so much area, and when you're behind, when you're fishing out of a kayak, you, you don't have a whole lot of room to put a big spread out. So um, that that is one definite um, upper edge that uh, his bait's going to have for kayak angling. Um, but moving on really quick here, uh, the pointers, echo tail pointers of the week. What I wanted to do um, was talk about uh, hook arrangement on echo tails. I'm going to start out with the minis and work my way up to the magnums. The So from the, 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 the smaller game fish to the larger game fish. Um, this is how we currently rig our mini echo tail. If you, you can see that hook is up on the top edge. That hook is a limerick hook. Okay, So what you can do is actually swing that hook down in a downward position. I would have to remove the snap. Here, I'll just show you what it's going to look like after I do that. That's what it's going to look like after I swing the hook down. Um, where where does that come into play? Well, sometimes fish just hit the bait differently depending upon how active they are. Um, so the limerick hook allows you to easily reposition hooks um, uh, on the fly without needing a split ring pliers. Um, next, we have... Uh, this is our three quarter rounds, and you're going to start seeing some of our baits um, are going to start having this front hole option, which allows you to run a hook up at the nose of the lure. Well, why would you want to do that? First of all, a lot of bigger fish take headshots, and you're going to have that hook positioned exactly where you want on a vertical jigging situation. Um, the other thing, too, is, well, you can see we've got this uh, Kalen's Jerk Minnow here. Feel free to, you know, run some stingers back there on your longer tails. Um, just another little uh, tip. Here's one for you. Actually, we had a customer fishing the Fox River um, who's been utilizing um, not quite the hook uh, positioned up on the top, but he's been positioning, taking the front hook and pinning it underneath. Um, but this is rigged to be fished uh, more snagless when he's fishing from the shorelines, when he's when he's fishing up um, you know, on the Fox where there's a lot of debris and rocks and stuff to get your lures caught up on. Nobody wants to lose a, a lure. So this is a really good way to cast um, or a vertical jig uh, without having to worry about losing your, your lure and getting it snagged. So um, once again, we are, all of our one ounces now have this top hook position. Um, so depending upon uh, when you order, you may or may not get it. Most of our custom stuff in our one ounce does have this front, this back hole position. Um, you could certainly drill a hole into the metal. Uh, you just have to use a small bit to pilot it through. Um, moving on, uh, here's another. Um, this is our king magnet. As you can see, we custom uh, rig the blades to fit uh, the species depending upon what we're trying to target. So. What we did was we took a barrel swivel and 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 extended the hook back. A lot of times king salmon like to come up and swipe behind the bait. Well, that puts that hook right there. And the barrel swivel allows the hook to spin. So a lot of times when, uh, you know, your, your Great Lakes fish are, when you're reeling them in, they, they're thrashing, they're rolling. This allows that lure or that hook to turn with the fish to be able to increase hookup percentages. Um, so that's uh, that's something that you could play around with even if you were trolling for pike or muskies. Um, it might be something if you've got fish coming up and slamming at the tails. It's one more way to get that hook back just a little further. Um, here's, an, here's, here's another uh, example of that. You can see we just threw two double split rings together, and it gives it the same type of... Um, the, the same type of uh, motion, uh, not quite as, as, uh, as good as the barrel swivel, uh, but this is a technique commonly used for stripers because stripers like to thrash and roll too. So a lot of times on their, thra on their striper plugs, they like to uh, double split ring their, their baits up like that. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about, um, most of our musky models 
are going to be rigged with this front hook up at the nose. This is set up for, mostly for vertical jigging. Um, f- like I said, feel free to move those hooks around. Um, a lot of times during the fall, we'll actually take these baits. This is a, a seismic shad by uh, Kalens. This is a really good tail, by the way. Um, but a lot of times when we troll with them, w- one of our techniques is actually to bottom grind. Um, literally take and let out enough line to just tear the bottom up. Uh, you don't want that front hook dangling there if you're going to be making bottom contact. You're just going to get it snagged up. Um, so you could certainly just move the hook back, remove the spinner, or even like this one here, we just took and moved left the spinner in the middle, remove the front hook completely, and just threw one hook. When, if, if you're using this type of um, setup, there's really no need. You don't have to pin that hook in the back. You can just leave it dangle and swing free. That way you got one extra, one more point hanging back there. Um, I think that pretty much covers it for hook uh, positioning. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something because there's, there's so many different ways to rig these. Um, to to customize to your fishing conditions. Um, So feel free to to mess around. That's what the lure is designed to be versatile uh, for you to be able to custom fit. Um, I am forgetting one thing. This is actually pretty important. Um, We are going to be uh, launching a new... um, a new item on our website. You'll feel to find this onto our homepage. Uh, we're f- we are going to put together an Echo Tail starter kit. Okay, and the Echo Tail starter kit has seven different sizes of our of our uh, going from one tenth ounce all the way up to one ounce. This gives you as the angler an opportunity to try and test out each of the smaller sizes that are geared more towards your crappies all the way up to bass and walleye. I mean, and even muskies is one ounce. has caught um, some nice muskies along with our half ounce. But um, once again, you know, we uh, we wanted everybody to be able to feel the what the lures feel like with their own equipment. Um, everybody's got uh, different, uh, you know, line diameters, different uh, rod actions, reels, um, and and some people may not have what they need um, for a bait that they want to order. So this gives you an opportunity to try each size out in one shot. Uh, just order it and we put it together for you. It comes with all these spare tails, um, kale and scrub tails. So that will be located, the Echo Tail Starter Kit will be located on our homepage of our website. Um, Let's see, outdoor news. The AIM tournament was over the weekend up on Green Bay. Uh, very tough weather conditions. Very windy up there. 30 mile an hour winds. I heard of tornado warnings. Um, very strong gust. I mean, those guys really had to strategize how they were going to fish their, their tournament based upon the weather forecast. I saw a lot of videos in Outdoors First Media. Guys sitting around and listening to the weather channel before they were even leaving the dock. So, um, very difficult. Uh, congratulations to uh, Lynn Nikolash and Mark um, Kamarkowicz. Uh, they took first place. Um, I had an opportunity to talk to Lynn a little bit about um, about the tournament. He was pretty excited. I know he's been uh, fishing up there quite a bit this year, um, and and the weather's just been you know it's been so up and down this year. But uh, Lynn did say that uh, they caught a lot of their fish jigging, and they caught some fish on uh, blade baits up there. Uh, to win the tournament um, the, the week before in the MWC. Um, I know that uh, the top team also was using blade bait. So kind of going back to the in-fisherman article um, about uh, bombing walleye, it's really starting to become a pretty good technique to, to win uh, tournaments and, and just catch fish in general. Um, but uh, congratulations once again to Lynn and Mark. Uh, take a vet fishing, uh, was over the weekend as well. Uh, Sunday, uh, down in Illinois, they had around 50 vets and 40, how many, 40, uh, 46 guides they had. It was hosted at the Thirsty Turtle, uh, great day. You know, they, they launched the boats, they went out fishing. I heard the bass were, were, uh, were, were biting pretty well. Um, Came back, had a nice ceremony, had a nice lunch. Jay Garstecki does an excellent job um, along uh, along with uh, the rest of the board members um, of putting that event together. Um, the next event is coming up in June on the Madison Chain on Lake Wabisa held in McFarland, Wisconsin at the Legion. Um, 
Upcoming events, uh, it, let's see, we've got the Great Lakes Kayak Series coming up on June 6th. That's going to be down at the Fox Chain, uh, presented at Heritage Harbor and, and Quest Water Sports in Ottawa, Illinois. Uh, they're going to be targeting bass, both largemouth and smallmouth, all and white bass. Um, so that's uh, that's an exciting event. We are a sponsor of that uh, of the Great Lakes Kayak Series. Uh, they they had a pretty good turnout last uh, couple weeks ago um, when they were fishing on Lake Delavan. Uh, the AIM tournament coming up June 28th on the Pete and Well Flowage. I actually might uh, be able to get up there and attend. I'm going to be on a camping trip with my family uh, in that area, so I will be uh, probably swinging by and and uh, checking things out. Um, also, the uh, PMTT is the same weekend. Uh, I think it starts on June 27th because that's a Saturday. Um, that will be up in Eagle River. Um, for any more tournament coverage, information, videos, uh, check out the forums. Check out uh, the videos, um, postings on Outdoors First Media, whether you're looking to uh, target uh, or, or check on uh, walleye tournaments or musky tournaments you can go to walleyes first muskyfirst.com uh, they have everything that you're going to want uh, as far as covering tournaments along with uh, really good forum boards and in in uh, guys talking about different tackle and techniques and uh, information about uh, electronics really good forum board there um, moving on to fishing reports for the week uh Madison uh, Fishing Reports. Oh, and by the way, if anybody, uh, if I'm not covering something that somebody would like a report on, just reply to our blog. Um, reply to our blog and uh, put your request in, and we can certainly do our best to cover that area for you. Um, this week, Madison Chain, this is uh, by Brian from uh, Esox Assault and Chaos Tackle. Uh, he was out on Lake Monona. He said it's pretty clear. Water temps around 60, 62. Uh, they were able to hook uh, into a few bass and pike. Uh, they were chasing muskies, of course. Um, muskie fishing's been really slow on the Madison chain this spring. Kind of hit or miss. Um, they were able to get a few muskies chasing towards the end of the trip. They were throwing their Esox Assault double eights. Uh, Dad also had a chance to talk to Ron Bearfield, multi-species fisherman from my hometown. Uh, when I called him, he was actually out fishing Lake Mendota. It was a really tough day. Uh, that was yesterday. Uh, the, they have been getting crappies, perch, uh, sheep's head. Uh, uh, crappies, like I would mentioned, have been a little slow. Um, water temp had dropped. 10 degrees from the day before on Sunday. I, I believe he said that, um, or Monday they had, they did very well out there. He also wanted to make a note that on, on Lake Wabisa, the crappie bite has been really good in the evenings, even all the way up into midnight. Um, they've been using, uh, 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 floating Rapalas, uh, Echo Tails, uh, both on Lake Monona and uh, Wabisa for the crappies. Um, and and uh, a lot of pike out there, too. Small pike out in Wabisa this year, I've been noticing. Um, Lake Wisconsin, the walleye bite has slowed down a bit. Uh, they've been trolling uh, uh, dragon jigs and trolling shad wraps and flicker shads on Lake Wisconsin. That report is from Ron Bearfield, fishing guide Ron Bearfield. Next, moving on, our fishing report from the Nasita area. Castle Rock and uh, the uh, Pete and Well Flowage area by Jesse Qualley of Greenwater Walleye Service. I'm just going to read his report here. He sent me an email. Uh, Jesse says, guys are still catching good numbers of white bass below the dams. Uh, and uh, let's see, cooler temps uh, last week has prolonged the spawn for them at this time. Um, most of the black crappies have spawned in the river. White crappies are spawning on the Castle Rock and the Peaton Well. Cooler temps have slowed down the spawn for the crappies on the main lakes. Walleye, the walleye bite is on and off the last couple of weeks because of the weather. Uh, we need the weather to break to get the trolling bite moving back up again. A uh, few guys... I've been catching a few muskies. Cats are an absolute fire right now, no matter where you go. Both the Pete and Well and the Castle Rock is extremely dirty due to all the storms and the rain they've had the last couple weeks. Uh, normally, the water temps this time of the year are in the lower 70s, uh, but right now they've been in the lower 50s. Uh, and he also made a good note here. Uh, Jesse's a, a, a bear hunting guy, and I'm actually going to be hunting with Jesse this year. Uh, bear baits are starting to get hit. Uh, he's pretty pumped up about putting some trail cams up over the uh, right after the holiday Memorial Day weekend. Um, and also, he's been uh, finding okay numbers of mushrooms. 
Um, you just stress this towards the end of the email that uh, he, they, they need a break in the weather up there for the fish to really get going. Um, next report comes from Rob Wendell of Great Lakes Kayak Angler, southeastern Wisconsin. Um, the coho bite has uh, primarily turned into a fly bite. It's been, once again, because of the weather, there has been no consistency to that bite. Most of the consistency have been down has been down in Illinois, uh, but they really need, he feels like, a, a warmer uh, weather. Usually by May, he said that these, um, the, the, the coho bite should be on fire right now. So, um, you know, it's uh, one of those things, just uh, just the weather kind of making fishing conditions difficult at this time. Um, next report, southeastern Wisconsin, comes from Chris Wilson from Hard and Soft Fishing, the maker of Kalen's Tales. Um, Chris has been able to get out to Lake Okachi, I believe, over the weekend. He says that the bass are on fire out there. All you got to do is find the green weeds. Um, you know, I, I believe tubes and and uh, some of their uh, some of the Kalen's um, plastics they've been throwing, the, the jigs, the swim jigs and whatnot. Uh, but uh, he said the fish can be found, the bass can be found from one foot of water all the way out to, to deep, you know, your, your deep green weeds into 12, 15 feet of water. Uh, so from shallow to deep, sounds like bass are, are all over the place out on Lake Okachi. For more fishing reports uh, in southeastern Wisconsin, go to Dick Smith's. They got a really good weekly update on all the lakes in southeastern Wisconsin, including rivers. Um, moving on, Kurt Schultz from Kurt Schultz Guide Service um, up in the Wausau area. Uh, water. This is uh, uh, I ta- had a chance to talk to him a little bit. Once again, uh, water temps have been fluctuating from 55 to 65 degrees. Um, he's been mostly targeting uh, smallmouth bass. They've been absolutely on fire this week. 90% of his fishing uh, has been targeting bass this week. Uh, due to an early spring, a couple, uh, you know, this year, the bass are actually they they came in and 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 they came into the shallows kind of early this year if you remember back in i believe it was march we had some really nice warm days that fluctuated well kurt is saying that those fish came in a little bit early earlier and it sounds like they stayed there um so because of that some of their spawning cycles are wrapped up at this time uh they are just absolutely on fire the walleye bite is also pretty good right now but like i said he's been concentrating most of his efforts um with his clients 90 percent of them on catching smallmouth it's hot right now um you got it you got to get them smallies when you can um he's been throwing uh jigs plastics echo tails and also topwater baits have been producing up there in the Wausau area on the rivers for Kurt Schultz. So thank you very much, Kurt, for your uh, fishing report. The next uh, report comes from uh, John Carlson from Ross's Sports Shop. Uh, I'm going to read his report. Ross's Sports Shop uh, customers are reporting walleye action to be good with mostly smaller fish being caught. Uh, Look for the walleye to be around the first major break in the lake or about uh, 10 or 15 feet of water. Reports of crappies being scattered between shallow and deep water are coming in with most anglers targeting the shallow water bite with plastics or minnows under bobbers. Bluegills are also being targeted in the shallow wood and uh, near new weed growth. Thank you very much, John uh, Carlson from Ross's Sport Shop. Uh, Be sure to check into their shop up there if you get a chance this weekend uh, to get out fishing and pick up your bait. Um, And then also Winnebago uh, Fishing Report from uh, my fishing partner. Um, This is uh, by Mark Schramm. uh, check out uh, myfishingpartner.com. They've got all all kinds of good videos and tips and reports. I just want to point out some of the. They do have this report posted onto their website. I just picked out a few of the the highlights from from the long extended report they have. Uh, Winnebago has been very gin clear. Temps have been hovering around 60 degrees. Um, with the cold front, anglers had kind of mixed results. Some of those bites only lasted for a day, sometimes only hours. Um, cr- the crappies have moved deeper. Um, let's see, largemouth bass are starting to move into the shallows along the weed lines. They've been using spinner baits to get those. Uh, the mouths of the rivers are, are continues to hold the walleye, the catfish, the white bass, and sheep's head. Uh, pumping flies remains the dominant presentations. Uh, echo tails were also productive along with other blade baits. Um, so for more of this report, 
go to uh, myfishingpartner.com. Um, that pretty much wraps up our fishing report and our show for today. Uh, a couple forecasts uh, going for the uh, what the what would I be doing this week if I was going to go out uh, targeting uh, fish. Uh, with echo tails, well, I'd be burning them over the tops of weeds for bass and pike and musky, the half ounce, the the one ounce, um, you know, the the uh, the bass around the beds. I, Noah, one of our pro staffers, and Israel done. They were casting from shore, um, hitting the bass. They're set up on the beds, letting them sink. They like them because of the fast uh, fall rate, and then they, you know, they burn them in, and it's got a nice tight vibration, small profile that resembles a bait fish, and. Uh, they like to uh, they like to chase. They can't stand that. But uh, the other thing, crappies. Uh, you know, this is always a really good time of the year to use echo tails for crappies, as Ron Beerfield had mentioned. Our tenth ounce, our three sixteenths ounce. Um, you know, our uh, even our quarter ounce has worked really well this time of the year. Uh, and don't forget, up in Green Bay, they've been getting fish up there. Uh, the tournament was one on blade baits, cast echo tails target those rock humps um you know trolling up there has always produced this time of the year with the echo tail line both in the half ounce and in the one ounce uh so this pretty much wraps up our show for the week uh thank you for joining us once again make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and join us again on the next episode of catch